Hi everybody, I'm Shah from Charlie's Angel Tarot on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and uh, anything else. Yes, there is a special page, Charlie's Angel Crowd, but that is totally different. But you can find that one on Facebook as well. That's where I will be doing my workshops. Now, you might have seen the reviews on the books, The Healthy Witch and um, the um, uh, Workplace and Spells book. I'll be doing uh, courses on Charlie's Angel Crowd on these two books. If you would like to know more information, have a look on at these two reviews. I've also done the review on the Tarot of the Kingdoms and I've also done a review on the Lenamon Cantomancy and uh, the TLC for the Soul and I hope you will like them and share them uh, sorry this way and share them and I hope you enjoy them now I'm going to do the Pagan Ways Tarot and that is by Anne Franklin Anne Franklin there are 78 cards in this deck and it's easy to understand guidebook appropriate for all levels of readers now I like um, different decks and I like to use them for different seasons and in general of course so if you know me and you follow me then you know that I love uh, my decks and uh, they start speaking to you as once you start touching the cards so let's open it up this is also a deck from Shiva Red Feather Publishers and I think it looks awesome and that is what the back looks like and it says on the back become initiated into the realities of your own psyche and become your guide to spiritual enlightenment there are unseen worlds over other worlds overlapping our own populated by gods and goddesses nature spirits and elements for the pagan everything has a soul or spiritual essence this deck is based on the pagan world view its symbol and teachings and offers 78 beautiful cards featuring gods and goddesses an accompanying guidebook tells the story of the fool as he journeys through the minor and the major arcanas encountering the forces that shape him and each one of us the myths of the gods create links between cards and um, between major and minor and between the inner and the outer paths we walk and it costs 39.99 so let's get started i can't wait i always find them difficult to open there you are this one is really easy so here we go please do have a look at the other reviews because you will find them really magical the artistry on two of the decks are amazing and the photography on the others amazing Shiva makes such beautiful decks and presentations they choose the right authors right it's black on the outside with blue and white and we've got a white little hold all to open up the deck and it's stuck <laughs> no it's not a magnet and this is what it looks like on the inside like I said Shiva the presentation are ah, I've got no words I'm speakly, speechless with every presentation they do okay about the creator Anna Franklin is a well-known pagan priestess and an author of 28 books on witchcraft and paganism including the popular sacred circle tarot 
and the Fairy Ring Oracle. Her books have been translated into nine languages. She regularly speaks at conferences, moats, or moots, I think it's moats, and workshops. Anna lives in, in, in an English village with her partner John and their three cats. Oh, that's nice. It's an English author. Lovely. Now, they come in two separate decks. And I'll, we'll discover what that and looks like Welsh. Look, <laughs> love that. The Gaelic. Right. We've got the book. And it starts with the Pagan Ways. In memory of Paul Matson, my best friend, my inspiration, and my compass. 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 I don't know how you want to say it. It's like grass and gra grass, and tomato and tomatoes. Acknowledgements. So, for different languages in England, you pronounce it differently. Okay. You've got the introduction, the Pagan Ways Tarot, the journey of the fool. The Minor Arcana, The Journey of Life, The Sword's Intent, Wands, Will, Cups, Love, Pentacles, Manifestation, The Major Arcana, The Journey of in, in, Intention, Cards, Nought, The Fall, and then you go to the Minor Arcana, and then you go to the Major Arcana, and then you have the appendix, the symbolism of the cards, using the cards for divination, the zodiac spread, the planetary spread, Romani spread, the Celtic cross spread, using the cards for meditation and spiritual development, meditating with an individual card, the elements, elements wheel exercise, the wheel of the year. And then we go to the introduction, the Pagan Ways Tarot. It's quite a long piece to read, but I will read a little bit of each paragra uh, paragraph. Introduction. The first known tarot cards date from around 1430 CE and were created from for a wealthy Italian Viscon Visconti or Visconti family. They were not intended for div divination but for playing a card game called Tarocci. They contain four suits plus 22 hand-painted pictorial trumps with featured characters representing medieval social types, virtues, moral moral allegories. Um, it wasn't until the 18th century that the books began to appear setting out instructions for using cards for telling fortunes and this gives you a little bit of uh, history and where they come from and who designed them etc etc. The Pagan Way Tarot. In creating a new deck that changes some of the names, symbols, Im imaginary of all the decks. I am following a long and honourable tradition. This is an unapologetically pagan tarot and um, and the ideas within it some mistakes here within within it are based on the pagan world view, its symbol and teachings rather than the Judeo or Christian imaginary of older decks. Pagans recognized that the magical world we perceive with our five senses is only part of the world whole. They are unseen other worlds, overlapping our own, populated by gods and goddesses, nature spirits and elements, the conscious embodiment of natural forces and energies responsible for the function of the universe. For the pagans, everything has a soul or a spiritual essence. Each card features a god or a goddess. The story of the gods are threads 
in the tapestry of this deck, creating links between cards, between the major and minor arcana, and winding between outer and inner paths. They are gods from many different pantheons um, to illustrate the fact that the the concepts concepts they personify are not restricted to one culture or period but are universal ideas that embody mythological truths. Oh, that is fascinating. I love mythology and culture, history. The phrase mythological truth is not a paradox. Myths are stories that give us clues to the nature of life, temporal and spiritual manual to the whole experience of ourselves and others. Used wisely, myths initiate the individual into the realities of his or her own psyche and become guides to spiritual enlightenment. And then it goes on to the journey of the fool, and the journey of the fool, the major arcana of the tarot is often called the journey of the fool, and is said to describe the life experience from innocent innocence to wisdom. Few decks and books give equal weight to the minor arcana, but I believe that the realms of the minors are an essential part to the fool's journey. Together they give a rounded picture of human life, of whom and what we are, and the forces that shape us. The minor account describes the outward journey of life and its lessons, while the major arcana describes the inward focus of the path of the spiritual quest and initiation. The fool is usually placed at the beginning of the major arcana, though Crowley placed him at the end, but the number of this card is zero, which tells us that the fool stands outside the deck, the whole tarot is his journey, and ours is his journey and ours, as he represents each one of us as we travel through the events and mysteries of life, mundane and sacred. For this reason I have placed him right at the beginning, so that he can undertake each life stage in turn and travel from youth to maturity, middle age, old age and finally into the spiritual initiation. And then goes to the what the uh, minor arcana, arcana is and the journey of life. That's all about the four suits and it tells how the um, full travels and what it means and the in, uh, elements etc etc the swords are intent the youthful fool begins his journey in the realms of swords for most modern pagans this corresponds in the direction of the east the point and sunrise at the vernal equinox and is associated with spring, youth, new beginnings, growth, and the element of air. I'll just read the first few lines, and then the will is wands, or the wands is will. The now adult fool continues his journey into the realm of the wands. The sun stands highest in the south, so the south is the point of the circle associated with summer solace midday with things beginning to ripen maturity with will and illumination then it, it does it is really informative i'm going to read this book like mad okay because i'm going to do a witches series and that will come back into those books as well cups love on the third state of, it, of his journey, the fool enters the realm of cups, which corresponds to the season of autumn, harvest, sunset, the west, and middle age. 
the cups correspond to water which has often been considered to be a living thing or certainly to have power of sustaining and bestowing life as well as begin being capable of taking it every ancient society society on it springs wells water sources as sacred then we go to the pentacles manifesting pentacles relate to the north the cardinal point of the circle never touched by the sun therefore associated with darkness old age mid midnight winter mystery and the unknown it is also the point of the winter solstice and rebirth through death beautiful the major arcana from the um, the major arcana journey of initiation from the everyday concerns of the minor arcana the fool turns inwards and enters the major arcana the path of initiation true initiation is not a moment or a ceremony but an ongoing process of expanding consciousness beautiful um, then there's chapter end notes so Rachel Bollock Pollock 78 degrees of wisdom and then you get suggestions on reading other books Joseph Campbell the power of myths quote a um, Mirkela uh, Eliets from the primitives up to Zen so that are books that you can they get the information from I suppose Wow it's colorful there you go and you get the story about the fool and its journey and the meaning of the card what it means upright and what it means reversed beautiful there you go and I think you'll find these pages are uh, or the chapters are sep separated by such a page and with the suits this is the suits of swords let's have a look it's full of color it's gorgeous this is the ones so let's have a look if they separate this is the ace of ones no in some books they have a s special page announcing the suit and explaining the suit okay so they've done that in the beginning let's have a look this is the ones I love paganism I love Vicar because it's, it has to do with nature and because I've done the series I've always believed um, that anybody can work together like the regular life pagan life Wicca life uh, ordinary life um, psychics and mediums can all work together and if they only m a lot of them do realize it but there are some that don't want to acknowledge because I don't know most probably because they don't know what paganism or Wicca is or veganism and that's why I started to make the series to make it clear that there's nothing in a name because you are you and you there are just people they have a different belief system and they live accordingly and paganism I have a lot of respect and Wiccas as well the good ones because they take from nature and they give back to nature and they celebrate nature and life like the Indians they have a sham shamanism we have priests and wickers and and pagan pagans have high priests and priestesses 
They all believe in the ultimate energy. The elder. The elder. There you are, the elder. That's the high priest. Let's see whether they do mention for non pagans where da, 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 the elder, what the elder is. On a, I'll just stop the video here because I would love to. I'm nosy. That's me. I feel compelled to describe this because I think this is beautiful. I've got the old version of this really and that's by the mythic mythical mythic tarot and that's where um, that's really um, written f in the pagan way and what the pagans believe and that's what this book reminds me of um, the journey that's the journey of the, that the fool travels and how he has come this far and I think it's beautiful really so I I suggest read this book definitely don't just ignore it when you get it and get to know the um, mythology and the uh, belief system and the knowledge the culture behind it so he's come this far and he's given up and he um, and just as b he gets despaired um, he meets this old man the elder the hierophant and th I'll read this bit to you so that's why I'm cutting the story a little bit short but it is interesting sit the elder tells the fool I have experienced all the things you have and very much more I have known the sacred realms you yearn for and my job is to teach others how to attain them without losing their ability to function in the physical world some call me the hierophant so they do explain what the elder is and that's beautiful which means the one who teaches the holy things others call me the Pope meaning maker of bridges since I bridge the worlds of the material and the spiritual, the worlds of sensuality and the world of meaning. I didn't need a teacher, protests the fool. I'm doing pretty well on my own. Think back and remember how you learned to read, replies the elder. If you hadn't had a teacher, you would still be trying to puzzle out the letters when you could be reading great literature if you had would have if you could had some help if you if you would have had some help you may um, have been told many things on or read many books but this is not the same as having experience experience them in the way I have be aware that I cannot impart spiritual understanding to you, but I can show you where to search and what to avoid. I can show you the rules to live by, not a dogmatic set of injunctions from some received text, but the right way to live in relationship with divine order and then you've got the upright meaning so that is beautiful it's very wise like the upright meaning is it is said that when the student is ready the teacher will appear the elder provides spiritual knowledge and guidance within the structure framework that helps to lead you to your spiritual goal he can also be a wise counsellor or friend who gives you invaluable advice and this too can be divine help sent through a human agency. The elder indicates traditions and an education. He may be the initiator into secret doctrine but the card can also indicate riots of pas uh, rites of passage such as baptism, marriage, funerals, starting college and graduation. Reversed, the elder reversed can indicate a crisis of faith. When you realize that some dogma 
no longer holds true to you for you. You can when you are searching for new answers to the internal questions. Be careful as you are vulnerable vulnerable uh, to being easily influenced at the time. You could receive bad advice and encounter someone who tries to gain power over you. Be the poison of spiritual leader or teacher is one that can easily be abused. The wise person believes nothing. He has read or been told until he has analyzed it for himself and found it to be good and beneficial. That is absolutely gorgeous the way they've taken the trouble or this author has taken the trouble to put in the history and the journey of the fool and what the cards mean. It's really deep and you can learn a heck of a lot. The lovers. And that's the green lady and the green man. The chariot. The, it looks like a coach. No, it is a chariot. It is a proper chariot. Well, let's hurry up and let's get um, going and and get the cards out. But now you've seen a little bit uh, the universe. So that universe. That's the world. Okay, beautiful appendix. Let's have a look what the appendix is. Blackbirds, altar. Oh, these are all the symbols. The symbols of the cards. So let's have a look. We'll just have to renewal. And the symbol of the cards. Strength, strength. Um, I'll just have to learn how to symbol of the cards. I might have to ask one of my witches, my witch friends. Well, the appendix uh, of the symbolism of the cards, like um, we'll see this back when we're going to have a look at the cards. Like children promise hope, new beginnings, new ideas, new perspectives. The altar, that's most probably the altar of the magician. And you've also got swords and the colors um, with what means, what they mean. In the pagans, in the key, we saw a key in the book of the elder, the higher hierophant in the book. So this is how easy it is to understand within 27 minutes of just flipping through. Using the cards for divination and the zodiac spread, then you go into the spreads and that is the, um, what, uh, this is the This is the zodiac spread. This is the zodiac spread. That's the one I actually did. I didn't realize it existed. But I've done the yearly one. The zodiacs. The months. Um, and then it, it tells you what card one is two, three, right up till ten. And it also gives you the houses. Like I'll read number one for instance. It clarifies. Number one is Aries. That's the first house. This card will give you general clues to the personality of the querent, the person for whom the reading is being made. This might be yourself. This initiate personality will initiate in innate personality will affect and colour the queen the querent's attitude towards all areas of their life. So it's also in some place it's it's known as the birth and then you go into uh, card two which is Taurus Taurus and that's financial matters card three Gemini travel and communication well to me that's new travel but it's also communication card four cancer home life and parents card five Leo pleasures Card 6, Virgo, Health. Card 7, Libra, Marriage and Relationships. Card 8, Scorpio, Endings and Legal Matters. 
Card 9, Sagittarius, Philosophy and Religion. Card 10, Capricorn, Career. Card 11, Aquarius, Friends. Card 12, Pisces, Restrictions and Secret Fears. So that is how you can read a 12 card spread. Then you've got the star. I like that one. And then this looks a lot like the grand tableau. But this is the Romany spread. And then the Celtic cross. Using the cards for meditation. And this is done on in the pagan way or the Wicca way. As they use the cards for north, south, east and west and what element is combined with that and then the wheel of the year that goes into that as well for meditation and there you go so let's have a look at the cards I can't wait I think it's beautiful beautiful deck I really will enjoy using this deck. I'm definitely going to read up because it's going to help me with my um, uh, workshops. I love to learn things about other um, cultures. And we've first of all we have the fall and there you've got the child so that are uh, that's the symbolism the child I just saw that in the book and the butterfly and the fool if you know a little bit about Wicca and paganism the and the journey of the fool then you know that the fool is naught and she's she said up to us told us that she's put it at the beginning of the deck and not at the end and he was born in the cave. Then we have the. Uh, she's put it at the beginning, and then we start at the suits of swords. I thought she would have started with the. Um, no, that's the journey. Okay, that is the ace of swords. And here again, you see the swords. The swords you can find back, the symbolism. Then you've got the two of swords. I love the way they dress. Medieval. The three of swords. It also describes what blood means. And here it also describes um, the four of swords. Now, we've got swords here. Ah, I'm just missing something here. There you are. The fool. And then we have intent. Intent. Ace of swords is intent. The two of swords, stalemate. I like the, the little uh, word at the bottom. The three of swords, sorrow. Sorry about that, guys. Then we have the Four of Swords, Truth, Truth. Then we have the Five of Swords, Defeat. And I like the way she's really got people to enact the, um, the cards, the photos. The Six of Swords, Transition. Beautiful. I really do like them. Seven of Swords, Deception. It's a, a good way of, when you're learning the tarot, what a word like that means. Eight of Swords, Constraint. Constraint. And even for the people that do 
no terror the nine of swords worry I love it um, it's nice to have the, the the word of the pagan language and what they mean ten of swords and of course that doesn't take away the basic meaning princess of swords so it's not page it's princess princess beautiful color sky then we have the knight of swords and we've got a we've got lamb here so that you will find back in the symbolism as well and you've got the knight of swords knowledge and you see a hawk so you will find those symbolic things back in the list of symbolism then the queen of swords austera austera and I know that is a feast. King of Swords, air. Ace of Wands, will. The Two of Wands, dominion. Dominion. The Three of Wands, Foundation, Foundation. The Four of Wands, Harmony, Beautiful. Look at that rich gr emerald green. Five of Wands, Strife. In this it does look as if they are fighting. But it, right wing, right weight stick. Not. It is meant as competition and disagreements. Six of ones, victory. Seven of ones, challenge. Eight of Wands, action. I like the um, mystique around th this deck. The Nine of Wands, well, that she r really looks bruised up. Resilience. The Ten of Wands, oppression. Princess of Wands, Beltane, that is also a feast, a date in the calendar around May, or in May, Knight of Wands, Adventure, and you can actually see country in the back there, Land, Queen of Wands, She's got a wand here, Midsummer. Knight of Wands, Fire. Sorry, no, the King of Wands, the King of Wands. Fire. Then we've got the Ace of Cups, Love. Love. This is more purpley in real life. Two of Cups, Union. Three of Cups, Grace. The Four of Cups, Discontent. Discontent. That's more like a black and white photo. The Five of Cups, Loss. The 
Six of Cups Nostalgia Nostalgia The Seven of Cups Illusion They are gloss finished and they're not edged and the stock is mm, quite sturdy but eight of cups pathfinder I've had stock that which is uh, not so flimsy uh, th these are not so flimsy as some of the other cards that I've had these are quite sturdy nine of cup cups aban abundance ten of cups reward that were the four suits now we're going to the bigger corner I think um, oh no we've got the princess of cups She looks a bit like Meryl Streep. Then we've got the Knight of Cups, Compassion. And what does it say with her? Lug Lugnessa. That's also a feast. Lugnessa. And then we have the Knight of Cups, Compassion. The Queen of Cups, Herfst, that's harvest, Herfst is autumn in Dutch. The King of Cups, water, and looks like aquamarine and emerald. Then we have the Ace of Pentacles, and it says manifestation. So that can go back on this pile because that's the cups. This is pentacles, and you've got the um, oh, the pentagram of the witches, and the uh, the that's the like Stonehenge. Two of pentacles, and he's wearing a mask. Balance, and you can see his skull in there and also cave drawings here in the corner so you can find all those symbols back what a candle is the three of pentacles work the two of pentacles is balance work four of pentacles oh this is really well done control Five of Pentacles, Restriction. Six of Pentacles, Bounty. Seven of Pentacles, Cultivation. Eight of Pentacles, Skill. Nine of Pentacles, Gain. It's people together, not alone, which is rather pleasing to the eye. Ten of Pentacles, Tradition. Princess of Pentacles, Samhain, again a feast. And here you can see the cauldron, and that's what you also can find out the symbolism of the cauldron. Knight of Pentacles, practicality. And he's quite sober. Queen of Pentacles, Yule, that's harvest. Autumn. Well, we'll find out what Yule is. I'm um, just—I've—I've—I've I've known what it was, 
Let's have a look. Sorry, I do get <laughs> Yule. Yule. Ah, it's not there. Yule. Yule is winter. Okay, I just got that from one of my other books. Then we have the King of Pentagrams, Earth. And then those are the four suits of the Minor Arcana. And then we start with the Magician. Now you can see all types of symbols here. The sword, the pentagram, that's the coin, the pentacle, the cup. I'm missing the wand though. Let's have a look. Where's the wand? Ah, oh, it's by the pentacle. That's the magician. Then we have the high priestess. And it looks like a crystal ball. She's also the moon goddess. And there's a white dove above her head, which means peace and tranquility. Then we have the lady, the green lady actually. The lady, the empress. And she holds a bowl with piglets in it by the looks of it. And she's got a green headdress. Yes, made out of natural things. Oh no, she's holding her tummy. She's sitting in a yoga position and holding her tummy. She's pregnant. Okay, Mother Earth. And then we have the Lord, the Emperor. Then we have the Hierophant, the Elder. Then we have the Lovers. It's quite a beautiful picture, this. I love the white crown she wearing of white flowers. The chariot. And then we have the strength. And we've got the bear, the lion and the fox. And she's wa wa waving a feather of an eagle. Beautiful. What has she got in her hand? Oh, she's got a rattler as well. I don't know what you call them in English. To shake away or warn the evil spirits. And then we've got the hermit. And he actually has not got a wand here to lean on. Then we have the weird. Now you really need to know your tarot, if you know what number 10 is, um, because it is the Wheel of Fortune. But this is the tr symbolizes the Tree of Life and the, the, the three ladies. So you need to read the book. It's uh, One says this, one says the other. It's like the Holy Trinity, a bit. Okay, and then we have Justice. That's beautiful. He's wearing up a feather. Then we have the hanged man. And he's actually hanging not upside down. Then we have death. And we've got the scythe. She's got the scythe. Then we have Temperance. That's beautiful. And I think the eagles? No, the do doves. The doves. And then we've got the underworld. And that is um, like two Dobermans chained up. The devil.
the tower. That lo looks like the Martello Towers you find in Britain along the coast. That was to protect the coast from enemies. Um, then we have the star. She's gorgeous. And I feel so serene with that. The star and the water jug and the peaceful the peace that she shines out there and the, the water around her cleansing her. And then we have the moon. The sun. Now I like these cards because they're they are plastified and if if you use them a lot you'll find fingerprints on them because they're glossy but they're great to wipe clean I've done that with my other decks that are done the same I cl cleanse them literally with a, a, uh, some stuff with a little cloth a rebirth a rebirth so the rebirth is Well, let's, uh, let's have a look. I think that's judgment. Rebirth. Judgment. People rising from the dead, but you don't see any people here except the green man and the world and the child being reborn, bringing into life. And then the world card. The world card. absolutely wonderful deck now uh, they're not edged and actually I like the way that they're not edged I could have been black but then it would have been really dull so I really do like the black and white uh, the opposites so that's really nice and the because they are black rimmed uh, the pictures really pop they really pop against that black background really well balanced with the color schemes and absolutely amazing look at those colors that really pops the jump off the cards okay now let's have a look how they shake oh yes they're nice Just have a look. Now it's like an old door squ squeaking because <laughs> it's the first time they are being shaked. They're very good stock, really good. That will make them last a little bit longer. They are about the size of an oracle card now I've got big hands so if you've got small hands it might be a bit of difficult for you to shake them this way but I've seen people also shaking them this I'll show you a way just put them like that and I can't do it that way I wish I could because it's much gentler for the cards you see I get stuck and they're beautiful I really do and they've got the sign of the moon goddess the triple moon you've got the mm, new moon old moon and the full moon I really do love them okay well I'll be using them for my weeklies and my monthlies of course okay I hope you've enjoyed this deck as much as I have and you'll have something to do in the rest of the summer holidays read up on pagan ways literally and figuratively I think they're gorgeous. 
so take care and enjoy the deck as much as I will. Please share and like and give us the thumbs up. Thank you.